Mexico is building something massive, a $5 billion corridor connecting two oceans and aiming to rewrite the rules of global trade. Some are calling it the project that could finally challenge the Panama Canal's throne. But can a stretch of rail and concrete really compete with one of the greatest engineering feats in history? Let's find out. A new line is being drawn across the map of the Americas, one that could change the flow of global trade forever. In southern Mexico, engineers and workers are carving out the interoceanic corridor of the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, a project designed to link the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through the narrowest part of the country. If it works, it could reshape how the world moves its goods. For more than a century, the Panama Canal has ruled the seas, an engineering marvel and a bottleneck the entire planet depends on. But Mexico believes the future of trade no longer belongs to a single narrow waterway. It belongs to speed, to flexibility and to innovation on land. And if this plan succeeds, global shipping routes may never look the same again. To understand why this matters, we have to travel back in time, before the age of shortcuts. In the early 1900s, getting goods from New York to San Francisco was a logistical nightmare. One option, drag cargo across the entire United States by land, painfully slow and costly. The other, sail around the tip of South America, through the treacherous Strait of Magellan, where storms and currents destroyed ships and hope alike. Then came a bold idea, cut straight through Central America. The Panama Canal was born from that dream, but its creation was brutal. Workers faced landslides, malaria, yellow fever, and heat surpassing 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It wasn't just a trench, it was an entirely new system of locks and lakes, lifting ships over a continental divide. After 10 relentless years, and what would equal a billion dollars today, the canal opened in 1914 and instantly changed the world. A trip that once took months could now be completed in days. By 2025, more than 10,000 ships pass through every year, carrying half a billion tons of cargo. The canal became the beating heart of world trade. But that heart is now under stress. The 21st century has pushed the Panama Canal to its limits. Cargo ships have become enormous, some so big they barely fit through its newest locks. Global trade is faster, larger and more demanding than ever. And, as if that wasn't enough, ever-changing weather patterns bring new challenges. In 2023, Panama suffered one of the worst droughts in its history. Reservoirs that feed the canal began to dry up, forcing operators to reduce the number of ships allowed through each day. Billions in global trade were delayed. Shipping lines waited in queue for days, losing millions every hour. The canal that once symbolised unstoppable progress was now showing cracks. And just when the world started to look for alternatives, Mexico stepped forward with a bold new plan. This idea isn't new. More than a century ago, long before the canal opened, Mexico tried to do the same thing. In the late 1800s, President Porfirio Diaz dreamed of connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans through the Isthmus of Tehuantepec, a land bridge only 200 kilometers wide. By 1907, he made it happen. Trains began hauling cargo across the country, linking two oceans with steel and steam. For a few short years, Mexico stood at the center of world trade. Then, in 1914, the Panama Canal opened and instantly changed everything. Mexico's railway traffic collapsed by 80% in a single year. 
the line that once symbolized progress became a relic. For generations, it sat abandoned, overtaken by weeds and silence. But the dream never truly died, and now, more than a century later, it's being reborn. In 2018, President Andrés Manuel López Obrador revived the vision. But this wasn't a mere restoration, it was a reinvention. The new Interoceanic Corridor, or CIT, would be far larger, faster and more integrated than anything before. Spanning over 1,000 kilometres of new track, the project includes three major rail lines, parallel highways and two deep water ports, one on the Gulf of Mexico, the other on the Pacific Ocean. Here's how it works. A container ship docks on one coast. Cranes unload the cargo directly onto freight trains or trucks. Within six hours, those containers arrive on the opposite coast, ready to rejoin the global shipping network. No locks, no drought delays, no congestion, just speed. For ships too large for the Panama Canal, the CIT offers a shortcut that saves days at sea and millions in cost. It's one of the most ambitious infrastructure moves Mexico has ever attempted. Construction began in 2020 and progress came fast. Old tracks were torn up, dense vegetation cleared and steel rails stretched across jungles and mountains. But one section of the old line was privately owned, threatening to stall the project. So, Mexico made a decisive move. The army seized control of that railway. Critics called it extreme. Supporters called it commitment. Either way, it sent a clear message. Mexico would not let this project fail. Since then, new terminals, stations and bridges have risen across the isthmus. For towns that once felt forgotten, the roar of engines and welding sparks became the sound of opportunity returning. The Interoceanic Corridor is about far more than shipping efficiency. It's a blueprint for national growth. The project is expected to create 500,000 jobs and attract $50 billion in investment. Factories and logistics parks are being planned along the route, forming an industrial belt across southern Mexico. For regions like Oaxaca and Veracruz, among the poorest in the country, this could be a once-in-a-generation transformation. For decades, Mexico's industrial power has been concentrated in the north, near the US border. Now, that balance is shifting. The south is becoming the new frontier of opportunity, powered by rails, ports and ambition. So, does this mean the Panama Canal is finished? Not quite. Officially, Mexico insists the CIT isn't meant to replace it, but to support it. A kind of pressure valve when the canal faces congestion or drought. But global trade is ruthless. If a faster, cheaper option exists, shippers will take it. And if that happens, the canal's century-long dominance may finally face real competition. In truth, competition could benefit both nations. It might push Panama to innovate, expand or modernise, just as Mexico is doing now. The same rivalry that once ended Mexico's first trans-isthmus line might now spark a new era of progress on both sides. Then came a surprise twist. In December 2023, Mexico launched its first passenger trains along the corridor. Sleek, modern and efficient, they now carry travellers from the Gulf of Mexico to the Pacific Ocean in just a few hours. The journey cuts through jungles, mountains and farmlands, a cross-section of Mexico's raw beauty. What began as an industrial project is now a cultural and tourism renaissance. 
new stations are attracting businesses, hotels and tourism ventures. The corridor is connecting not just oceans, but people, communities and opportunity. Every dream faces resistance. The CIT still must overcome logistical hurdles, environmental scrutiny and international scepticism. Coordinating multiple rail lines, highways and ports is a monumental task. And convincing global shipping companies to shift from a century-old habit will take time. But the signs are clear. Mexico is not waiting for permission to lead. The country is taking control of its future, investing in itself and betting that the world will follow. If the corridor succeeds, it won't just change trade routes, it will redefine what's possible for developing nations. For over 110 years, the Panama Canal has stood alone as the link between two oceans. Now, for the first time since 1914, it has a rival. One built not on water, but on land. Powered by trains, ports, and the will of a nation determined to rise. The world once waited for ships to climb through Panama's locks. Soon, it may watch freight roar across Mexico on rails of steel. This is more than a project. It's a shift in the balance of global trade. When history looks back, it may say the next great leap in commerce began here on a narrow stretch of land where Mexico dared to dream again. If this story of Mexico's comeback fascinated you, you'll love what's next. Click now to watch Saudi Arabia just shocked the world with what they're building. Because the race to shape the future of civilization is only getting started.